I've been asked to talk about central nervous system Langerhans cell histiocytosis. There are really three ways that central nervous system is affected in LCH. First of all, there can be tumor-like lesions, in other words, masses that can cause headaches or seizures or changes in our vision or perhaps balance. There's involvement of the pituitary gland, which we know causes diabetes insipidus, and later on could cause problems with growth and development, thyroid, and sexual maturation. And finally, there's the neurodegenerative change, which is really what everybody is so afraid of because it involves the cerebellum, the back part of the brain, as well as some of the front parts of the brain, the cerebrum, and in this way can affect our balance, our ability to write and hold objects, feed ourselves, swallow, and think, as well as walk and balance. The incidence of central nervous system involvement varies greatly depending upon how you define it. And the first way we define it is by a radiologic uh, methods. In other words, by doing an MRI of the brain, you see some changes which we call enhancement. It just means there's whiteness where there should be a, a more even grayness of the brain. And that whiteness is brought out by certain uh, types of uh, MRI signals, and we call them T2 or flare. And there are characteristic findings in the cerebellum. Uh, that there is increased whiteness in the white matter, which actually looks kind of gray when it's normal. And there are other parts of the uh, cerebellum, the pons, and as well as the basal ganglia, which are in the, the cerebrum. Those uh, parts show these abnormal signals, and that those signals happen because there's nerve degeneration. What does that mean? When nerves degenerate, it means that they are dying, and for a while, they may function at less than normal uh, activity. But eventually, if whatever is, is affecting them, be it LCH or some other disease, such as multiple sclerosis, the nerves die and are gone. When those nerves are gone, then you have the symptoms that I mentioned with problems with your balance, speech, and you can even have intellectual problems. It seems to be that anywhere from 1% to 6% of all LCH patients uh, have this problem. And the reason I mentioned it uh, depends upon how closely you look is that in most of the studies that have tried to estimate the, the frequency of, of this uh, condition, is depended upon uh, the MRI images of the brain that were taken because patients had uh, bone lesions of what we call the facial bones, which means the orbit, the mastoid, the temporal bone, and the sphenoid bone, which is kind of inside our head uh, around our nose. Those bones, along with having diabetes insipidus, gives us an increased risk of having the neurodegenerative condition. The reason this happens is that bones in those areas have some uh, little pathways. Some of them are lymphatic channels, some of them are blood vessel channels that allow the LCH cells, be they the lymphocytes or maybe sometimes the histocytes, to travel backwards into the brain and get into the cerebellum or the basal ganglia or the pons. We uh, see the MRI changes usually before we find symptoms, but that's not always. Sometimes patients can present with balance and tremors and speech difficulties, and then that prompts an MRI to be done. Other times, uh, children may present with intellectual problems. They have difficulty in school. An A student becomes a C or a D student. A patient has tremors or flickering of their eyes or occasional weakness of their limbs. And these are signals that something could be going on. When we find these uh, abnormal neurologic signs, we will hopefully have done an MRI very close to that time and done a careful neurologic exam to understand exactly what's going on. And if the patient has the MRI changes and the symptoms together, the standard of care has been, treat, been to treat them. There are three major types of treatment. The first was retinoic acid, which was a study done by the French several years ago. And this showed that by giving this agent to patients for about a year, that their conditions seemed to stabilize. We don't have long-term follow-up with those patients, so I don't know if they re remain stable. 
The second way of treating these patients was intravenous gamma globulin, or IVIG. That works by decreasing the activity of the T cells. And we know from the very few biopsies of the brain that have been examined that it seems to be T cells that have infiltrated the brain and are causing the nerve damage. And we don't know if that's a direct cause because the T cells are there, because it's something the T cells are giving off, or if it's something we call a perineoplastic uh, phenomenon in which the, uh, the immune system gets really off balance and other cells in the immune system have now found a way to attack the nerves in the brain. The final and most successful way that we've found to treat uh, the neurodegenerative uh, condition is cytarabine or ERA-C. In, in a study at my institution, I found that uh, five out of seven patients, and this was a published study, had improvements in their neurologic exam, and some of them had improvements in their MRIs. All of the seven patients had subjective improvement. We couldn't see that their tremors were a little better in two of them, nor did their MRIs change, but they felt better. They didn't feel as unsteady. They just felt a little more solid. The good news from this study has been that all seven of those patients have remained stable. In other words, they have not deteriorated, and we have follow-ups ranging from six to 13 years. So this was the first and really the only published uh, study showing efficacy of, a, of an agent. This does not always work, unfortunately. And I found that patients who have symptoms for approximately more than 18 months, but certainly more than two years, our chance of success is markedly less. And although I think it's worth trying, we just don't have as good a result as I described in that series of seven patients. There are some new drugs that have come along that we are trying, but we don't have any standardized results. And I can just list a few things for you with just anecdotal results. Clofarabine is a drug that's been used for many patients recently who have a variety of uh, manifestations of LCH. This could be a very good drug to use for the neurodegenerative condition. A monoclonal antibody against B cells might stop the production of uh, gamma globulins, which are directed against nerves. That has been tried, and again, there are no standardized results to report. Intravenous methotrexate is a very effective drug for treating leukemia in the central nervous system, and it has been used for the CNS neurodegenerative uh, disease in LCH, and there is anecdotal evidence or reporting of some uh, positive results, but it's uh, just a few cases here and there. So we're faced with a, quite a frustrating situation that we don't have new drugs and we do have patients who desperately need some new treatments. And that is a very, very high goal of the Histocyte Society and particularly the Committee for Central Nervous System Disease to band together, to pool our data, to pool our thoughts, and to come up with better ideas about how to treat this condition. I think the obvious question is how can we prevent it? We know one thing is that in the past, when a patient with diabetes insipidus uh, with LCH was treated with vinblastin and prednisone for six months, the incidence of uh, diabetes insipidus uh, decreased from 40% to 20%. And I actually misstated that. So a, a person who had uh, lesions of the uh, craniofacial area, so the mastoid, the orbit, temporal bone, and sphenoid lesions, if those lesions were treated with vinblastin and prednisone for six months, then the incidence of diabetes insipidus went from 40% to 20%. Now with the LCH3 study that was just published, that incidence is down to 12%. And we think by treating for a year or may, maybe even longer, as the LCH4 study would, uh, would have us do, that we hope that this will decrease the incidence of um, diabetes insipidus and therefore decrease the incidence of neurodegenerative disease. Because the current data is that if a patient has diabetes insipidus, they have a 50% chance of developing the MRI changes of the neurodegenerative condition. Of that 50%, 25% or 12% of the original number will develop neurologic changes, which if we find quickly, we can treat with cytarabine or, or some other drug. But can we prevent the neurodegenerative disease in patients who have other lesions? And my simple answer is we don't know yet. And it, it will take the clinical trials of the society to, uh, 
to find this out over the coming years. There are some of us who are interested in, in using uh, some other drugs for patients who relapse, and perhaps if we institute some new drugs for the relapse patients, we will also decrease the neurodegenerative uh, problems. What are the long-term implications of this? Well, unfortunately, for those patients who don't respond, they may lose their ability to walk, have difficulty swallowing, have difficulty feeding themselves, and not be able to go to school. And some of these patients are confined to wheelchairs, are totally dependent upon their caregivers at home to take care of them. Ultimately, uh, a lot of these patients may perish. Uh, it fortunately has not been very many patients because we seem to keep them sort of steady with the IVIG and some other drugs. But clearly, we, we need to work with our colleagues in neurology and see if there's a way that we can find new drugs, such as those used for multiple sclerosis. But this is a, a pretty difficult task because those drugs have very selected uh, use limitations by the drug companies and by the FDA. So it's going to take a lot of hard work to come up with some new uh, ways. Some of the children, uh, as I mentioned, have neurologic or intellectual problems and have trouble in school. And it's very frustrating when an A student becomes a C or a D student. And for some of these children, uh, resource application, special education, brings them back up into maybe a B uh, level of uh, achievement. So uh, fortunately, I think with really intense educational in interplay, uh, we may improve these children's uh, life uh, style. But it is an ongoing issue and something that the society is very interested in trying to improve.